My name is Bill Kinney, and this is part five of a series of videos that I'm making about parametric curves. It's very important that if you want to get a lot out of these videos that you watch the first group of videos, starting actually with part zero, which is an introduction, and then before this one watching parts one, two, three, and four, you're going to get a lot more out of it. I am teaching both the math of parametric curves as well as Mathematica. These first few videos are necessarily more heavy on the Mathematica than I ultimately want this series to be. I want it to be useful for you even if you don't have Mathematica, but you'll necessarily have to sort of wade through the Mathematica to a certain extent uh, if you don't have it to get to the stuff that comes up later on. In this video, we're ultimately going to use, uh, introduce two new Mathematica commands that show us how to, that will display some things that we've looked at in new ways. So there are two new Mathematica commands in this one called table form and show. I also want to emphasize some mathematical things. We've got our foundational example here, modeling straight line motion at a constant speed, and I probably should add the phrase at a constant speed in the particular problem that you see here. We are modeling the motion of a person traveling between two points in one second. So let me add at a constant speed. And what we saw is that these two linear functions, f of t equals negative 3t plus 2 and g of t equals 4t minus 1, which I'll write down here, <clears throat> are two nice ways of doing this modeling. And they're, they're not the only ways, but they are nice. They will give this constant motion starting at the first point when t equals 0 based on the first function that gives you the first coordinate and, ending, and the second function that gives you the second coordinate and ending at the right point when t is 1. First thing I want to emphasize here now mathematically is that these two functions and the third function, the c of t, are different kinds of functions. f gives you, takes real number input and gives real number output. Remember functions take input, in this case t, the parameter for these parametric equations, is the input and it gives you real number output. Let me highlight this in blue. So t is the input here, x is the output. Both are real numbers. Typical kind of function that you deal with in pre-calculus and calculus. g of t is the same kind of function. t is the input, y is the output. But this other function here is a different kind of function and I've emphasized this by labeling the output here x comma y as a point. That's taking real number input, t is still the input for this function c, but it's not giving you real number output. It's giving you a point as output. As t varies, you get a different point. Remember, functions take input, which typically is a number, and give you output, which also is often a number, but it doesn't have to be. In this case, it's a point. You want to think of these two things together as one ordered pair, one point in the plane. That's a unique output for the given input t. So that's the mathematical thing I want to emphasize now. Uh, as far as Mathematica goes, <clears throat> I want to show two new commands, table form and show. First, we'll look at table form in the context of what we did in the first couple parts of this series. We used the command table and these functions, f and g, to generate a list of points that we plotted using list plot. Get rid of this thing here. I want to show that you can format the output of table in a way that would be more typical as far as how you would write it by hand using something called table form. Table form is a displaying function in Mathematica. What's going to be the input of this displaying function? The input is going to be this table command. I'm embedding it inside the table form. What that's going to do is it's going to, again, mathematics is going to work from inside out. It's going to use the table command to create this list. And then the table form command is going to take that list and make it look like a table, like you would draw it by hand here. This first column is representing the x coordinate, the first coordinate of the outputs. The second column is representing the y coordinates, the second coordinates of the outputs. We can even add some headings. An option in here, put a comma, then table headings. Arrow, the syntax is of this form for table headings as far as the what the arrow is pointing at. 
you've got your row headings, which would go along the left side of the table output, and your column headings, which would go across the top. I'm going to leave the row headings blank. I don't want any row headings because there would be too many of them. I'm going to leave, put some column headings here. What would be appropriate here? An X for the first column and a Y for the second column that I'm putting in quotes so that they come out in text. Enter that. Now you see the output of the table. As an actual table, X and Y are the headings of that table. We're looking at the X and Y coordinates of these points. I could do more with this. I could add a column for the time heading. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and do that. Point 0.1 time then. And let me add a T in here to show you I can do that too. So now we have the times here as well. Second thing in Mathematica that I want to show you in this video uh, is the use of the show command to add a little bit to this display. In the last video, part four, we used parametric plot and manipulate to animate the motion of the person as they walk. Here was the animation. Parametric plot draws the curve. The manipulate animates it. B is my letter that I use for what I'm calling the animation parameter, though when I use the word parameter here, I'm meaning something different than parametric curve, though it's related to that. T is the parameter for the parametric curve. It's the input variable, often time. B is the ending, the right endpoint of the interval that I'm plotting this over. It's going to represent a time as well, but it doesn't have to in general when you use it for the manipulate. The use of the letter B, by the way, is arbitrary. I could have used some different letter. It's starting at point 0001 and going up to 1. That's causing the animation to happen. It's essentially generating a bunch of snapshots of these parametric plots as B increases and then putting them together in an animation. It's the animation parameter for the manipulate. What I'd like to do here to end this video is I'd like to add a dot in this picture showing where the person is as time goes by. Not just the end of the red curve here, but say a black dot showing where they are. This parametric plot I'm going to embed inside another command. Lots of embedding going on here called show. I think I'll put the end of the parametric plot here. So I, I did something a little strange here. I put the ending square bracket for parametric plot after the plot style arrow thick red. Um, as is here, I've also got now an ending square bracket for the show down here, which used to be the ending square bracket for the parametric plot. This is not going to do anything different than what I just had. So what's the point? The point is that show can be used to combine different graphics output. And what I'd like to do now is I'd like to take this parametric plot and also combine it with a list plot showing the dot, showing the point. List plot, as I used in the first few videos, the few, first few parts of this series. I think I'll put the list plot, well, I think I'll put it second. It doesn't matter where you put it. I think I'll put it right here. Comma, list plot. Um, by the way, from the last video, part four, I actually added some things in here. Aspect ratio, arrow automatic, and axis origin, zero, zero, because Mathematica did some goofy things without these, this. So list plot is going to get combined with parametric plot. What do I want to plot with list plot? Remember, list plot plots points. For example, the point one, two could be plotted. There it is, that black dot there. Let me make it bigger. Plot style. I'll make it black as well. Black point size, say point zero two. Go back to videos parts one and two if you want to understand what that means. But that's just a static block, black dot and it's not in the right place. If I replace this one comma two with a C of B, not C of T, but C of B, that's going to be the location of the person at time B as B changes. Now watch this, this is my final thing to show you here. Now we see a dot at the location of the person as they walk. Essentially, you can imagine the dot being the person looking down on 
from above. We're combining, using show to combine parametric plot and list plot to make this particular animation, and it's kind of a nice add-on. We'll make other kinds of add-ons in future videos.